Hi, hi, hi. Okay, so very exciting, getting down toward the end, and this is really the last topic that we're going to talk about um, uh, for the entire semester for the for the series of uh, videos. Okay, great. So uh, let's get in. So uh, we're looking at uh, we're, we're looking at a matrix here for the check-in, and we're looking to find the lambdas, and for each one, we're looking to find an associated basis vector. So it's a check-in, uh, just really of exactly what it was we talked about last time. So let's have a let's have a whack. Let's see. Um, the matrix is uh, matrix is um, three zero four. Uh, o one one and O O minus two. Okay, and I'm looking to to solve the equation B one B two B three equals x times B one B two B three. That is, I'm looking for those vectors that are made x times as big. They're not rotated at all. They're simply multiplied by a factor of x. So for which x's is there such a vector? Now, obviously, of course, um, if you take the if you take the three b's to be zero, you can take x to be whatever you like, and and you'll get a correct answer. We're going to throw zero out as as a, as an acceptable answer because we want these. We're thinking of these as basis vectors. At the moment, we're thinking of these as members of a basis, and no zero can't be a member of the basis. So we're, we're going to regard that solution as, as not what we need. Okay, so let's have a whack then. Um, what we saw is that you, you, bring these, uh, you bring this over and you factor out the, the Bs, and you're looking at um, 3, 0, 4, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, minus 2. Take away x zero 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 x zero 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 x, all multiplied by b one b two b three equals zero zero zero. In short, I'm looking to solve here uh, three minus x zero four zero one minus x one. And uh, zero zero. What happened to the what happened to the minus? No, there it is. Zero zero, and it's minus two minus x. There it is. Minus two minus x by uh, b one b two b three equals zero zero zero. Okay, so I get the x is down the diagonal there. The minus x is down the diagonal. This is uh, this is of course this is. Or a linear system, I'll write it as a linear system. 3 minus x times b1 uh, plus 4b3 uh, equals 0. And uh, what, do, what do I got then? 1 minus x, 1 minus x times b2 uh, plus b3 equals 0. And then finally, uh, minus 2, minus 2 minus x times b3 equals zero. Alrighty, and, and of course we saw last time, um, we saw in the video, what the idea is here is that you say to yourself, uh, for example, if I take x to be, uh, if I take x to be minus two, why then I have zero times b3 equals zero. This is a zero equals zero equation. So now I've got, uh, I've got a free variable, namely b3, and so I've got infinitely many solutions, <laughs> some almost all of which are non-zero, and that's exactly what I need. So I'll, I'll, uh, in my mind, I'll think of one of the answers as being um, a negative 2. And then the, likewise here, if I take x to be 1, that will give me, uh, uh, similarly, will give me uh, a, a, a non-trivial solution for the homogeneous system. And if I take x to be 3, that will give me, finally, a third solution, a third non-trivial solution for the homogeneous system. So let's have a whack. I want to I want to put it all in one piece of paper. So I need a fresh piece of paper. Hope I don't forget what I was doing there. So let's see. I'm going to take these this system right here, and I'm going to uh, look at what happens when I take x to be minus two. We're in the habit of uh, when you fix the x here. We're in the habit of writing the Greek letter lambda. So I'm going to do lambda one equals minus two. 
All right, so if I plug in lambda 1 equals minus 2, and I remember the previous problem, here it is down here, I'd better better use this to copy. So uh, 3 minus a minus 2 gives me 5b1. And then there's a 4b3 equals 0. Uh, 1 minus a minus 2 gives me 3b2. And then there's a b3 equals 0. And then finally, of course, if I take uh, if I take x to be minus 2, if I freeze the, mi the solution of minus 2, why then I get 0 equals 0. So I have a homogeneous system. I have a homogeneous system that has, of course, infinitely many solutions. I recognize that b3 is free, and uh, b1 and b2 are leading variables. So let's see, what do I get here? That uh, b2 is uh, minus 1 third b3. Of course, parameterizing with the free variable. And then up here, what uh, b1 is uh, minus 4 fifths b3. And now, uh, if I'm looking for uh, an ex explicit uh, b1, b2, and b3 that satisfy these three, of course, I could take b3 to b1 uh, uh, and get a lot of fractions, or I could take uh, b3 to be, what, uh, 15 and get all, uh, all, all, uh, 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 all integers, so I'll do that just, just, just to do something. So the basis factor of interest is I'm taking b3 to be 15, so 15. I could have taken b3 to be minus 109, whatever worked, but I just picked 15. And then, uh, uh, what, to minus 5 and uh, minus 12. Okay, so uh, I think that if I take the matrix that I started with, 3, 0, 4, and write in minus 12, minus 5, 15, I will find that what I get over here is negative 2 times minus 12 minus 515. Let's try the other ones. What was the second one? 1. So lambda sub 2 equals 1. So when I plug lambda sub 2 equals 1 into the same system, same system, I, I, I'm not going to have space to write it here below, but same system, no, maybe I can fold this thing up. Just like arts and crafts here. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, so if I take if I take x to be one, if I look at the constant when x is one, then what I get for a system is a three minus one is two b one uh, plus four b three equals zero, and then uh, what uh, zero of course b three equals zero, and uh, minus two minus one is a minus three b three equals zero. All right. So this, of course, is a linear system with infinitely many solutions, and I guess I get here, obviously, B3 is 0. B2 can be anything. There's no restriction on B2. Right. This doesn't mean that B2 is 0. This means there's no restriction on B2. So B2 can be anything. B2 is free. Don't write reals there. Write complexes. And then uh, B1, well, if B3 is going to be 0, then B1 has to be 0. So if I pick a basis vector, I'm just picking one of the choices. There are lots of choices. I'm picking one. Oh, how about uh, how about uh, zero, uh, one, and zero? So zero, one, and zero. I could have picked zero, twelve, and zero. I don't know. I just picked. Okay. Okay. And then it seems to me the last one is lambda three equals three. So again, I'm plugging it into this uh, this system of equations. I'm plugging in 3, 3, and 3. And what do I get here? If I plug in 3 there, I get 0 times b1. So I get 4b3 equals 0. Uh, if I plug in 3, then I get to what? Uh, minus 2. Minus 2b2 two two plus b3 equals 0. And if I plug in 3 there, I get minus 5b3 equals 0. Minus 2, minus 3, minus 5. That's right. Okay, so what do I make of this linear system? Well, uh, obviously b3 is 0. So b3 is 0. 
uh, if B3 is going to be 0, then B2 is 0 also. And again, there are no restrictions on B1. It isn't that B1 is 0, it's that there's no restrictions on it. So B1 can be anything. B1 is an element of the complex numbers. And so if, I, if I'm picking a basis vector, I could pick uh, any complex number at all, but I'll, I'll, pick, uh, I'll pick one just, uh, just out, of sheer, out of sheer boringness. Okay, so what I've got then is a basis, one, two, three, that we saw in the result at the end of the last video that uh, associated with each of these lambdas is a different basis vector. Associated with each of these lambdas is a basis vector. So it happens that for each lambda there's one and only one basis vector here. Okay, all right, very good. Let's see, so, uh, so let's get into the material that we're doing today. And I'm reminding you, starting off by reminding you that, um, that, that what we talked about last time was that what we were just doing in the check-in is that uh, you can diagonalize the transformation exactly when there's a basis in the check-in. Of course, there were three basis elements, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3. Here it's beta 1 through beta n. And associated scalars lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, they were in the problem we just did, where T of beta i is lambda i times beta i. So we saw, for example, T of beta 1 was minus 2 times beta 1. T of beta 2 was 1 times beta 2. And T of beta 3 was uh, 3. It says 3 of beta 3. 3 times beta 3. So T tripled beta 3. Okay. Okay, very good. Oops, went just too far. Okay, so I'm going to introduce the word eigenvalues and the word eigenvectors here. So a transformation has a scalar eigenvalue lambda. If there's a non-zero eigenvector, that's a zeta, the Greek letter zeta. I like that because I can use z's for the, uh, for the elements of the eigenvectors, so lowercase z's. So that's a Greek letter zeta. So a scalar eigenvalue lambda, if there's a non-zero eigenvector zeta, so that t of zeta is lambda times zeta. So it's just what we've been looking at. It's exactly what we've been looking at. And then this is the associated definition for a matrix. This is a transformation. This is a matrix. A square matrix T has a scalar eigenvalue associated with the non-zero eigenvector if T times zeta is lambda times zeta. Okay, so T, excuse me, T, T is the matrix times the vector zeta is a lambda is a scalar times the vector zeta. All right. Okay, and again, we saw that on the check-in. So here's an example, uh, a, a small scale example. If I write down the diagonal matrix, happens to have four and two on its diagonals, then it has uh, two different eigenvalues. The first one is four, the second one is two. So uh, la lambda one is four, lambda two is two. And I mentioned in the, in the last video, it's very standard to use lambdas for the eigenvalues. That's, that's uh, very common. Okay, and, and uh, to say uh, lambda one equals four here, I have to justify that by by naming a vector that gets multiplied by 4, naming a non-zero vector that gets multiplied by 4, that is naming an associated eigenvector. All right, so I, I named 1, 0. I could have named 2, 0, or 3, 0, or minus 5, 0. But anyway, I named 1, 0. If you do the matrix vector multiplication, what you find is that you've multiplied the input vector by 4. And similarly down here, just simply because the diagonal matrix is so easy to understand what it does, if you write down here, associated with the uh, eigenvalue of 2, if you write down here what happens when you do the matrix multiplication of this kind of vector, 0, 1, or 0, 5, or 0, 100, remember 0, 0 isn't acceptable, got to be non-zero. If you do the matrix vector multiplication, you end up doubling the vectors. So the, the idea here is that if you think of the matrix as representing a transformation in the plane, especially like in the check-in, if you think of that matrix as representing a transformation in the plane, then the transformation acts on those vectors in a particularly simple way. So the advantage of the diagonal is the diagonal matrices is that we, they're very easy to understand. However, note that not every vector is, is just simply rescaled. Just as an example, if I don't take 1, 0, or 0, 1, if I take something kind of in the middle, it doesn't get rescaled. So the, the, the vectors that are rescaled, the eigenvectors, are in some way special.
Okay, so obviously I gave a definition and you now operate. Next up is to be able to compute. We want to be able to compute the uh, things we just defined. So I'm giving you a matrix here. T is just a matrix with some screwball numbers in it. And it says find the eigenvalues and associated eigenvectors of this matrix. So here we go. We want to find uh, x's where uh, t times zeta is x times zeta for non-zero zetas. So we've we've done this before, and in particular, we've done it just a minute ago with the uh, with the check-in. You write uh, you, you bring you bring the everything over to the left-hand side of the equation. You factor out the vector so that you've got now zero minus x, seven minus x, four minus x in the diagonal. And this is a homogeneous system. So uh, when we think about what we know about homogeneous systems, of course, what we know is that a homogeneous system has a non-zero solution. That's what we're interested in. Homogeneous system has a non-zero solution exactly if the matrix is singular. And we saw those in the check-in. We got uh, uh, with lambda 1 equals minus 2. We had a singular system. Remember, the bottom row was 0 equals 0 sort of stuff. Okay, but now we know something about singular systems. So we, we know that the matrix is singular is exactly happens if the matrix has a determinant of zero. So I'm going to take the determinant of that matrix. Here we go. It didn't all fit on one slide, so I put it on the next slide. I took the determinant of that matrix. The matrix has numbers and x's in it. When you take the determinant, you end up with an expression that has some x's in it. And I'm not going to go through the, the details of taking the determinant of that matrix, but it turns out to give you a cubic. Kind of easy to see because there's three x's there. But, but anyway, turns out to give you a cubic, turns out to give you this particular cubic. Um, it, it's also not easy to see, but nonetheless true, that uh, this cubic factors into x minus 5, x minus 4, and x minus 2. You'll remember that at the start of this chapter, we said that we're going to work with the complex numbers because we want that the polynomials factor completely. Now, uh, this doesn't have complex numbers in it, but nonetheless, the explanation for why did we switch to complex numbers is exactly this. I want to figure out for which x's is this matrix singular. That leads to a polynomial. When can I factor the polynomial? You can factor the polynomial precisely if you're working with complex numbers. So that's exactly why we made the switch. Is what's written here. Okay, but see, you know, I, I don't, I, I just, I don't want to be distracted by the details of complex numbers here. I want to be focused on what eigenvectors and eigenvalues are about. So I wrote down a cubic that happens to factor into three easy numbers. So I get the eigenvalues of uh, the first one is five, the second one is four, and the third one is two. Now, just as we did on the check-in, I want to find some eigenvectors associated with those eigenvalues. So here we go. To find the eigenvectors associated with eigenvalue of 5, you do what we did on the check-in. Oops, sorry, clicked not far enough. You do, to associate with an eigenvalue of 5, you do what we did on check-in. You plug in 5, 5, and 5. You get 0, 5, 7, negative 2, 2, 7, negative 1, 1, negative 1. So, so again, I'm subtracting 5 because I plugged in for x equals 5 and that will that will give me a solution, a non-zero, non excuse me, non-trivial solution to the homogeneous system. I know that solving, I know that plugging in x equals 5 gives me a non-trivial solution and here it is. I did the computation kind of off screen. So Gauss's method gives the solution set and the non-zero non -zero elements of that solution set are called the eigenvectors. Here's the solution set. I call it v sub 5 because it's the v, the vector space, associated with 5. You can see that it's a vector space. It's, it's a dimension 1 vector space. It's all multiples of 1, 1, 0. Obviously, then on the next slide, I'm going to worry about the eigenvectors associated with lambda 2 equals 4 and the eigenvectors associated with lambda 3 equals 2. So here we go. The eigenvectors associated with an eigenvalue of 4. Well, I'm going to flip back. I know it's annoying to keep flipping, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to flip back and remind a person, where do you plug in 4? Here we go. Plug in 4 right here. You get minus 4, 3, and 0. When you do, you get minus 4, 3, and 0. Now you have a matrix, and, and you're going to do Gauss's method. You're going to find that it has infinitely many solutions. And we've done this so many times 
that I think we can take a high level view at this point and not not mess around with the details too much and and say here that that uh, that when you solve that system you get infinitely many solutions it's all the multiples of minus seven minus seven one do you see that when I say multiples, I say complex number multiples, but anyway, all the multiples. I write it as V sub 4, just when you're working your way through the book, I write it as V sub 4 because it's clearly a vector space, it's the one associated with 4. And finally, what do you do for x equals 2? I'm, I'm going to flip back, I know it's annoying, but I'm going to do it anyway. There we go, there we go, you plug in the 2, the 2, and the 2. That gives you a linear system that Gauss's method will solve. That, there, there we go. That gives you a linear system that Gauss's method consult, will solve. A person sees right away the first two rows are the same here, so it's pretty obvious that that this uh, that there are infinitely many solutions to this linear system. And it so happens when Gauss's method solves it that you get all the multiples of one minus one one. Okay, so in short. I can find the eigenvalues and associated eigenvectors of this matrix. The eigenvalues are on this slide here. The eigenvalues are 5, 4, and 2. The associated eigenvectors are the non-zero vectors in this set. That's associated with 5. The non-zero vectors in this set, that, those are associated with 4. And the non-zero vectors, non-zero members of this set, those are the eigenvectors associated with the eigenvalue of 2. Okay. Obviously, going to do the same problem. You know, one is not enough. One example is not enough. But the, but just just to, uh, just really step back and take just that that sort of ten second breath here is that uh, we we are given a matrix and want to find the eigenvalues and then use those eigenvalues to find the associated eigenvectors. Okay. To find the eigenvalues, we we realized that we need to find a determinant. Okay, here we go. Okay, so uh, 3, 1, 1, 3. You start with this equation. It asks which vectors, b1, b2, are multiplied by a scalar? Which vectors are doubled or tripled or, or multiplied by 4 or minus 1 or minus 2 or minus 3 sort of stuff? Now, there's lots of vectors that have, have crazy things done to them. Which vectors have, this, in some sense, the simplest possible thing done to them? Just like the diagonal matrix would, would multiply some vectors by the things on the diagonal, well, which vectors here are simply rescaled? All right. And that leads immediately to this equation right here, homogeneous linear system like we were seeing in the first week of class. We want to know when does this homogeneous linear system have infinitely many solutions because the unique solution of zero won't do. So we ask ourselves, when is the determinant of the matrix equal to zero? I took the determinant of the matrix for a 2 by 2 matrix, it's not very hard. You get a quadratic and we know we could apply the quadratic formula or anyway we spent a lot of time in high school uh, uh, practicing factoring, uh, maybe junior high? Practicing factoring quadratics. There we go, this one factors into x minus 2 and x minus 4. So when is it equal to 0? It's e equal to 0 for the, the two cases of, of 2 and 4. If I take the x equals 2 version of what's here, I get a linear system. So many times we've done Gauss's method, I'm really reluctant to get, get up to my elbows in doing Gauss's method here. But a person does see right away, right, that this is the same two equations. A anyway, so we get here uh, 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 the vectors associated with the eigen vector of 2, excuse me, eigenvalue of 2, the, uh, the, uh, the eigenvectors associated with the eigenvalue of 2 is all the ones where b1 and b2 have the opposite sign. And of course, they, and they can be complex numbers. b1 and b2 have the opposite sign. Next up, what about, uh, what about if you take the eigenvalue of 4? So then you get a minus 1 and a minus 1, and you look here and you say to yourself, well, these two are not the same equation, but one's, the, one's a negative of the other. So, so we, again, infinitely many solutions. Here we go. The eigenvectors are the non-zero vectors in this set. And, of course, we're very good at this stuff by now. This is a dimension 1 vector space. It is all the ones where b1 and b2 are the same, and we're only interested in the non-zero members. But anyway, the ones where b1 and b2 are the same, and again, complex numbers. So, for example, 3 plus i, 3 plus i. 
phi 5 minus i minus i. Um, if the matrix is upper diagonal or lower diagonal, then the polynomial is especially easy to factor. So yes, you, you'll see like homework questions that do that. Uh, factoring polynomials is a separate question entirely. If you get a sort of a tough polynomial to factor, what exactly do you do? But I, I'm trying not to focus my attention on how do you factor hard polynomials. I'm trying to focus my attention on how do you find eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So we're just at the moment think, trying to think about problems where the factoring is not the hard part, where the hard part is the conceptual understanding of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Okay. So if the matrix is upper or lower diagonal, then it's very easy to see what to do. Obviously here that the determinant, because of these zeros, the determinant is simply the product down the diagonal, and so you get a 3 minus x and 2 minus x appears twice. So there is an eigenvalue of 3 and an eigenvalue of 2 that gets repeated. Here, uh, here's the, the system when you plug in lambda 1 equals 3, 2 minus 3, 3 minus 3, 2 minus 3. And a person sees right away that the second and third equation are multiples of each other, so we're going to have infinitely many solutions. And here's the infinitely many solutions. The eigenvectors associated with an eigenvalue of 3 are all of these that are non-zero. So all the multiples of 1, 1, 0, where z2 is not equal to 0 and is a complex number. So just as a, for instance, 3 plus i, 3 plus i, 0, or 7, 7, 0. Those are eigenvectors associated with an eigenvalue of 3. Right. What about the eigenvalue of 2? So for the eigenvalue of 2, you, you plug in 2, 2, 2, and you get uh, 0, 1, 0. There we go. Wrote it down there. A person sees right away the zero row. So you solve this and you get, uh, again, infinitely many solutions. I know that 2 is a repeated eigenvalue, but this is only a dimension 1 space. So you, you don't get repeated eigenvectors necessarily. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But in this case, you don't. In, in any event, here, uh, uh, we've done Gauss's method so many times. You're, you're simply looking at the eigen eigenvectors associated with an eigenvalue of 2 are all the multiples, the non-zero multiples, of 1, 0, 0 for any complex number. Okay, and then a uh, uh, comment here before we close. Matrices that are similar have the same eigenvalues, but not necessarily the same eigenvectors. So here's an example. These two matrices are similar. I, I wrote down the P that it takes to transform the one to the other. It's easy to check, because this is a diagonal matrix, that 1, 0, 0 is an eigenvector associated with the eigenvalue 4. But a little bit of computation shows that that just simply isn't true for the second one. It just isn't true. That's all there is to it. So matrices that are similar have the same eigenvalues, but don't have to have the same eigenvectors. Okay? Okay, that's enough for one day, so a person should try some homework and, uh, and have a whack at, uh, at, at, at getting a better feel for it, but we'll come back next time and do some more with eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Very good.